Steve Morris Engines. I'm Steve Morris. This is a uh, our 615 cubic inch big block Chevrolet that we built for Steve Neumantis in uh, England, in the UK. This is uh, one of our really nice pieces. Uh, this is actually a street driver, street car piece. Uh, Steve is going to compete on Drag Week. Um, so this is real similar to uh, um, our other engine that we built oh, last year, which is uh, Tom Bailey's uh, six-second car, which is a, one of the fastest street, fastest street car in America, one of the fastest street cars in the, in, uh, the world. Um, daily driver drove 1,500 miles, so you know, confident to knock on wood and Lord willing that uh, you know this engine should have no issues. Uh, this engine is um, um, this has our new intake manifold that we designed in-house, built in-house, developed in-house, and now tested in-house. Um, along with our normal package that we have in our uh, engines. It's a Brodex head, Brodex block, part number beep. See, can't tell you. Our camshaft with specifications of beep. And all the good stuff. Now this one has a Motec system on it, uh, coil on plug. Uh, Webster Engineering in the UK, John Webster, who's doing all the fabrication on this car, including the headers and whatnot. Um, and this entire package is really cool because this fits in a Bentley. A really uh, badass Bentley. Um, we'll have this associated with pictures of the car too. Uh, you can look at this on our Facebook or even be on our website. Um, big Waterman, 21 gallon pump. Um, the 615 cubic inches, don't remember if I mentioned that. Five inch, um, five inch tubing, throttle body. Uh, we have the big fuel rails, Moran's 275 per hour injector, uh, running at a higher fuel pressure, of course. These are, uh, Bullseye power, 88 millimeter turbos. Um, a little smaller than what the, this is what the Steve wanted to run. And uh, like I said, it makes great horsepower. There's no problem with the turbos whatsoever. Uh, this is a probably a little bigger motor uh, for that, but given everything that we're wanting to do, we're not shooting for a extreme maximum horsepower type application, but uh, you know we want the, the complete package with this. Now, um, you see there, cam, fuel pump crank trigger plate that we have on there. It's a dry stump motor, five stage. One stage takes care of the turbos, of course. Um, let's see what else we got here. Um, Turbo Smart gates. And it does have blow offs. Uh, we don't bother running them on the dyno. It's not nearly as big a deal. And Jessel valve train, our piston ring package. Um, compression ratio is right at, and then uh, let's see what else we got. Well, we use an Oliver rod. Yeah, we actually have Oliver. We make our own. Oliver makes a rod for us now, um, specifically for these higher horsepower uh, gas applications. Uh, real good piece, and like I said, also it's a the Brodex block, uh, Brodex head. Um, anyways, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, go outside and uh, make it pull, and we'll show you the numbers. Oh, and I'm sorry, this is also running on, right now we're just running this on C16, we don't have Q in it. Um, just running it nice, easy, uh, similar to what he's going to be running on at the track. We're also going to run this on E85, and uh, if we get time, we'll shoot a video of the E85 pull, or at least give you numbers on, on E85, as they run a street eliminator class in... Uh, over in the UK uh, that this would be competing in along with a couple other motors that we got competing over in that class uh, some of them pro charge motors uh, anyways let's go out and uh, take a video
now let's uh, take a look at the numbers of that. Now, oops, we did get after the uh, boost controller here just a little bit and uh, on that one. And uh, still working on, on uh, setting up the, uh, the duty cycle on that uh, boost controller because we don't use CO2 on this motor. The class they run doesn't allow CO2 on the wastegate, so we're just using manifold pressure. <clears throat> but anyways, uh, as you can see here, that, uh, excuse the noise there. And so we actually overshot on just a little bit, especially down low, and uh, gets a, it puts a pretty good load on the motor way down there. But um, anyways, at uh, 32 pounds of boost there, we're at 29.67, uh, 6,000 RPM, 29.93, 32 pounds of boost, uh, 30, 34, 30, 41, pretty much all 30 numbers all the way through here at 30, basically 32 pounds of boost. Uh, the one that we were really trying to get, though, uh, to get a good solid number on was that 7700. Right down there at the bottom was the 7700, 3,045 3, horsepower at 30 pounds of boost. Um, so, real good numbers there. Now, keep in mind, uh, like I said before, uh, this engine is, uh, well, it's, it's playing out a little big uh, for these turbos. But that's what we wanted to do and what the customer wanted to do, what Steve wanted to do. Uh, for drivability everything but uh, we know that if we put 94s on this uh, this exact same number at 30 pounds of boost I think would probably be closer to 3300 uh, with a pair of 94s on it versus the 88s uh, but the thing is really good uh, down low much better than the other <clears throat> the other engines we've done with the 88 millimeters um, but because this engine is so good it really eats up the turbos um, let's go back to we we'll show you on some of the lower tunes that we made. Now this tune uh, was when we just started out on it and uh, this is an 8 PSI tune. So I mean we ran it down lower in the RPM range everything. Uh, 8 PSI at 5000 makes 1243 actually 7 PSI. We were just working on the, uh, the uh, duty cycle on the solenoid for the boost control uh, at all these different boost levels. Uh, 6000 at eight pounds of boost, it made 14.76, and we only ran it up to uh, that 6,700, 6,800, where it was making basically 1,600 horsepower, 1,585 right there. But as we revved it up, it would have made even more. So I mean, this thing's 1,600 horsepower at eight pounds of boost. Uh, if we go back and look at another one, now this is at 15 pounds of boost, right through here, 14.9, 15. Uh, 5,000 was 17, 21, 6,000 is 20, 17 at 15 pounds of boost. Uh, 6,500 is 21, 20 at, at 15 pounds of boost. Um, let's see here, 21, 59, 21, 24, 21, 34, all at 15 pounds of boost right through there. So <clears throat> there the, the turbos are keeping up. It's in a sweet spot in the efficiency area. Everything looks good. Now if we go up to a, oh, that's the other one, 20 pound of boost, we can see through here, uh, 6,000 RPM at 20 pounds of boost, 19, made 2316, uh, 6,500, 2350 at 20 pounds of boost, and we only revved that up to 7,000, here it's actually out of the throttle a little bit, but, um, you know, basically in a 2400 range right there at uh, 20 pounds of boost. Now if we go to our 25 pounds of boost, actually 20, ended up being 24, 23 and a half right around there, 24. Um, 6,000 RPM, 2411. That was actually still at 20 pounds of boost. This boost controller, we were ramping it in. We're trying to ramp it in a little bit better. Uh, 57, 2540. 2551, 52, 43, 2550 at uh, 24 pounds of boost, 7400. You know, we're at 2563, so uh, just shy of 2600 horsepower at 24 pounds of boost. We would have put the other pound of boost in it. Definitely would have been up there in that 2700 horsepower range <clears throat> with just slightly over 25 pounds of boost. So really good piece, really happy with it. We're just a little under turboed for that many, for how big that motor is for, and, and we see that because we're having to add a lot more to the boost controller as we 
uh, we're RPM higher. Nothing wrong with the turbos, it's just a matter of it's a really big engine uh, and a really good engine. So anyways, very happy with the combination and very happy for uh, Steve Neomantis. And I'm Steve Morris, have a great day.